This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, we're now moving on to the risk management section of the syllabus, where, as you'll see in uh, the following lectures, uh, we're going to look at how we might deal with, how we might manage risk due to uh, changes in foreign exchange rates and risk due to changes in interest rates. Now, all of that uh, I'll go through in detail in the following lectures. Uh, this lecture is a little bit on its own. Uh, as you'll see, it's forecasting foreign currency exchange rates. You can be asked in the exam to forecast a future rate. You know, currently there may be two dollars to the pound. You could be asked to forecast what the exchange rate is likely to be in a year's time. Now, in practice, it's impossible to forecast accurately because all sorts of factors affect the exchange rate. It's basically supply and demand, you know, do people want dollars or would they rather have pounds? But you'll see there, it's on the first page, uh, it'll be affected by the rates of inflation in the two countries. It'll be affected by the interest rates in the two countries. One country pays higher interest. People may want to buy that currency to get more interest. Uh, economic and political prospects. If a country is doing well economically, their currency is likely to be worth more. Uh, the balance of payments. How much we're importing from the other country, how much we're exporting to the other country. Uh, again, that affects the demand for the currency and therefore the exchange rate. However, as far as the exam is concerned, if you are ever asked to forecast a future rate, we forecast it based purely on the relative inflation rates. And it's something called purchasing power parity, which, if you look at the second page, uh, well, let me explain how it works with that little illustration at the top of the page. Uh, as you'll see, you are, there is a formula given you in the exam which you can apply. Uh, but it is important that you understand the idea of purchasing power parity, as well as being able to use the formula. Now, look at that illustration. An item currently costs £100 in the UK. The current exchange rate is dollar pound at uh, 1.5. Now, in the next lecture, I'll explain the different ways in which you can be given exchange rates. But when it's given like that, dollar to the pound, It's being quoted against the pound, and it means $1.5 is equal to one pound. Now, say, the different ways it can be quoted, and I will go through that in the next lecture, but <coughs> it is a dollar pound quote. It's quoting the value in dollars of one pound. One pound is $1.5. Well, let's look at this illustration. UK, US. As of today, now, it says we have an item costing £100 in the UK. Well, what would be the equivalent price in the US in dollars? If $1.5 is £1, then surely in the US, the equivalent price would be $150. Uh, it says there's inflation at 2% in the UK and 4% in the US. So in a year's time, what would we expect the price uh, to have changed to? Well, in the UK, it's currently 100. With inflation at 2% in the UK, multiplied by 1.02, the pound price will have gone up to 102. Uh, what about the US? In the US, it's currently $150. Uh, but inflation in the US is 4%, so multiplied by 1.04. And it means the dollar price we expect to have gone up by, or to, $156. Well, what purchasing power parity says is that the exchange rate will change 
to keep the two prices equivalent. And so what would the exchange rate have to be in a year's time? For 102 pounds to be equivalent to 156 dollars, well remember the way we're quoting it here, how many dollars equals one pound? So the dollar pound exchange rate, if 102 dollars, uh, sorry, 102 pounds is 156 dollars, one pound will be 156 over 102. The exchange rate will be $1.53 to the pound. So a pound it, it will be buying more dollars, which means the pound, if the pound can buy more dollars, the pound is stronger, or if you prefer, the dollar is weaker. All right, well, that's the logic of purchasing power parity. However, as I, I did say, there is a formula. You're given it on the formula sheet, and I've printed it in the notes as well. The formula S1 equals S0 times 1 plus HC over 1 plus HB. What the symbols mean, S stands for spot rate, the rate on a particular day. S1 is the exchange rate in one year. Well, if I um, explain the symbols using the same illustration we just looked at, S0 is the spot rate now, today's exchange rate, which is 1.50 times, well, H in both cases is the rate of inflation. Uh, it's just making sure you learn and you're happy with um, which countries which. Now, the way I remember it, I don't know why I chose the symbols HB and HC. Um, I say, well, B is what I call the base country. And what I mean by that is the currency against which it's being quoted. Now, if you remember, these were dollar pound exchange rates. So the way it's quoted, how many dollars is equal to one pound? The pound is the base country. And so uh, HB, the inflation rate in the base country, which is the pound, the UK, it's 2%, it's 1.02. HC is the other country. So the other country here is the US, the inflation rate 4%, so 1.04. And of course, the exchange rate. One point five three. I'll keep to do decimal places. The current exchange rate was given to two places, uh, but of course that's exactly what I got before. So it's taken me a while to talk through it, but um, using the formula is actually very quick indeed. Uh, it's just this. I don't know if problem's the right word, but just the importance of remembering uh, which inflation rate is top and which is bottom. H C H B. All right, there are two examples there. I'll work through them, but it might be an idea if perhaps after the first one you pause the lecture and try the second one yourself before checking. But let's have a go. Uh, example one, well, virtually exactly the same, but with different inflation rates. Um, the exchange rate is currently $1.7 to the pound. Inflation is 5%, US 2% UK. What will it be in, first of all, one year's time? Well, the rate in one year's time will be the current rate, 1.7 times. Well, the base country here, again, it's the dollar against the pound. So the base country is the UK, where it's 2%. The other country is the US, where it's 5%. Which gives us... 1.75. So there's the forecast exchange rate in one year's time. Now the question also wants the exchange rate in two years' time. <coughs> Assuming, of course, that the rates of inflation stay the same. 
Um, and you can get the same answer two ways. Uh, I don't care. The exchange rate in two years' time, well, it's in one year's time, it's 1.75. But then another 1.05 over 1.02 gives us... One point eight zero. Or if you prefer, it should be obvious enough, you could have started from today's exchange rate of one point seven. Multiply by H one plus H C over one plus H B, but multiply twice to get the exchange rate in two years' time. So one point oh five over one point oh two squared. Check it yourself, but it should obviously be exactly the same. Give us 1.0, uh, sorry, 1.80. All right, one more, although as I said, I do think it would be an idea to pause the lecture and try the second example yourself and then start the lecture again and um, check that I've got it right. The second one, uh, this time it's the yen against the pound. So, two, currently 2,030 yen are equal to one pound. What will it be in two years and one year? Uh, one year and two years, sorry. First of all, in one year's time, uh, S0, the current exchange rate, 2030. Uh, at the moment, the, the quote is against the pound. One pound is 2,030 yen, so the pound is the base country. And so, divide by 1 plus HB, which UK is 8%. Japan's the other country. Inflation, 4%. The exchange rate in one year, you'd expect to be... One nine five five. And what does that mean? I say the pound strengthened or weakened. At the moment, the pound will buy two thousand and thirty yen. In a year's time, it's only going to buy thousand nineteen fifty five yen. It'll buy fewer yen, which means the pound is weaker or the yen is stronger. Uh, and finally, what will it be in two years' time? Well, like before, but I won't do it both ways. Either take your 1955 in one year and multiply by another 1.04 over 1.08. Or alternatively, take today's exchange rate and to get a forecast for two years' time, 1.04 over 1.08 twice squared. Which gives me... Eighteen eighty two, which I hope I've got right. Eighteen eighty two, eighteen eighty three. Not worried about a bit of rounding. All right, there we are. Uh, just one, um, a couple of final things. If you turn to the next page, um, you'll see that Fisher effect. Well, this is something actually we discussed earlier uh, when we were looking at. Uh, net present value calculations with inflation. Because I did say that in theory, as inflation goes up and down, so too should interest rates go up and down. Doesn't matter which causes which, but that inflation and interest rates go up and down together. Uh, and I went through this, I'm not going to go through it again, I mean, look back at the earlier chapters if, if you need. But there is that formula, given on the formula sheet, that the 1 plus the actual interest rate is equal to 1 plus the real interest rate, the rate if there'd be no inflation, times 1 plus the inflation rate. Now, you've seen that before. The only reason I mention it here is that in theory, if you're forecasting um, a, a future exchange rate, you can either 
use inflation rates, as I was doing there, or in theory, using interest rates should end up giving exactly the same result. Because again, inflation rates should be higher and lower as interest rates are higher and lower. Now in practice, that doesn't tend to apply in the long term, but not necessarily in the short term. In the exam, if ever you're asked to forecast a rate, you use purchasing power parity. You use uh, the formula I've just been through. You use inflation rates. You'll see in the next uh, lecture that um, interest rates we actually use for a different purpose. Uh, and so I have a read down that page, but it doesn't say anything other than what I've just said. Otherwise, I mean, that makes a beautiful um, two mark section A or section B question where there really should be no problem at all just applying the formula.